And we're recording on camera too. First of all, a sip from the cup. Mm, coffee. It's decaf, but whatever. Okay, hey everybody, you're watching Ballerina Badass. My name is Georgia Reed, and I am really excited to get my third, uh, what do you call this, installment of Dance Magazine. I used to get Dance Magazine when I was a little, little kid. My grandmother ordered a subscription for me, and I didn't fully appreciate it back then. Now here it is years later, and I saw them at the studio and was like, oh, I miss getting Dance Magazine. You know, I found myself reading it over and over again. So finally, finally, I got myself a subscription. So this is the April 2017 issue. I just wanted to do this with you guys and I'm just opening it up for the first time. So no idea what's gonna be in it. This is the choreography issue, which is very exciting to me. I love choreography. I've done a little bit. I'd like to do more. Um, this one is the choreography issue, Secrets of Making Dance for TV, Concerts, Ballet, and Beyond. Oh. Wow, so they're going to turn Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into a musical, probably which means it will also be a live musical danced movie as well. We have the live musical two versions without the extra dancing, why not, who knows? Improve Fester, Tips for Making Corrections Stick. Hmm, that's interesting. Final Curtain. Corps de Ballet lifer on her last season. I cannot imagine spending my entire career in the Corps de Ballet. I would go fudge nuts. Mm. Let's get into it, let's get into it. Ooh, we have a very vigorous dancer here. Spring collection, flirty, I thought I said fruity florals. Eurotar dancewear. Wow, that's a lot of crotch in the face kind of thing. Cool, whatever. Oh, now this is cool. Guys, look at this. January Dance Magazine Video of the Month. Did you guys know about this? Congratulations to Sasha Dimas, winner of January's Video of the Month contest. And it also got her a uh, scholarship. Cool, you could be the next winner. Enter your dance film at dancemedia.com. And then, oh, two famous English novels get the ballet treatment. In Charlotte, North Carolina, they're putting together Wuthering Heights as a ballet, very cool. And in Princeton, New Jersey, they're doing Pride and Prejudice as a ballet. Right on, okay, that's interesting. What else? Ooh, cultivating choreographers. Okay, we're on page 14 now. Dutch National Ballet is taking steps to nurture tomorrow's dance makers. Oh, I like that. So they're really trying to um, encourage new choreographers to work on things. That's great. I say if you guys can find a company or local dancers that you can work with and try new things on, it's a great opportunity. Another, um, I can put my leg up in the air and here's my crotch kick. Really into the crotch kicks and stuff right now. Okay, what's next? Page 18, David Dorfman. His work lands on the Great White Way for the first time this month. What is he doing? I've heard of David Dorfman. Has my friend worked with him? Jennifer Sider, did you work with David Dorfman? I honestly forget. So what is he doing? His first outing as a Broadway choreographer is a play about the making of God of Vengeance, a 1923 Broadway production based on a landmark Yiddish play and deals with homosexuality and freedom of expression. Cool, and it's got an interview with him. Very cool, I'm gonna wanna read that. Oh, Spring Awakening. Broadway choreographers bring a treasure trove of new shows to the stage. We're now on page 20, everybody. So let's see, we've got Groundhog Day. Ah, the musical, that's hilarious. What else? Miss Saigon and Bandstand. Okay, groovy. So it's talking about what all's coming in. We've also got some other ones. They're doing Amelie, the movie. They're making that into a stage production. Very cool. I love that movie. I know, I do, I do. Does anyone else here love that movie? Well, I do, okay. Here's the big center. Piece, the golden ticket. Broadway choreographer Joshua Burgess seems to have a lifetime supply of tricks up his sleeves. Cool. That's neat. So we're gonna be looking at that. I'll I'll be reading up on that. Ooh, there's really cool pictures, you guys, of the different um shows that he's working on. Dancing transgender. Ooh wee. I'm interested to see what this is like. Performers and choreographers are challenging dances gender norms. It says want to welcome all genders? Declare yourself an ally by putting a rainbow sticker in your studio or venue or a sign that says you are trans inclusive. Hire transgender teachers and staff. Consider whether a role or spot in the company must be gender specific. Challenging conventional casting may inspire fresh ideas. Cool. 
Well, for one of my followers uh, who is an avid dance fan, uh, Brack Thomas Fisher, uh, he wants to be the first male to ever perform Giselle. It's exciting. He's been talking about this for a long time. So I think that the way things are shifting, I'm interested to see if he doesn't pull it off. Or she, for that matter. Ooh, cool. Joffrey Ballet dancers express their individuality in the studio and it's got really pretty leotards and tights. Yeah, neat. Take corrections correctly. Learning how to incorporate criticism is an essential part of any dancer's training. Mm-hmm. If the teacher is giving it to you in a way you can hear. Be receptive, it's true, you have to be receptive. You also have to find the teacher that knows how to push your buttons in a healthy way, I think. Dancers can retain approximately seven corrections at a time. Huh, didn't know that. That's interesting, to help recall notes later, journal all your feedback each night and look it over before class. I agree, journaling is great. So that's a really interesting article. Okay, here's this thing on page 58. Funny girl choreographer Catherine Burns melds dance and comedy for her work on shows like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Okay, so this is about the choreographer and what she does. Cool, I would definitely wanna read that. That's Agnes DeMille, flying high as the cowgirl in her rodeo. That's awesome. One of the dancers who trained at my studio growing up uh, Elizabeth Farrell. She was way ahead of me and we all, you know, didn't even get to meet her. We looked up to her and she became a dancer with ABT Ballet and she learned the cowgirl role directly from Agnes DeMille, which is amazing. So, ah, and of course Stella Abreski. Stella Abreski on the back, you guys. Woohoo! So that's a good dance magazine. That's really good. There's a lot of really great articles in here, you guys. A lot of really helpful content, interesting articles, information, cool leotards, exciting news about the dance industry, how to take care of yourself. I dig it, I really dig it. So if you don't have your own copy of this, it's hard to find these now. They're not at Barnes & Noble anymore or any of those kind of bookstores, which is really sad, I think, uh, at least not out here in Los Angeles. Um, but you can definitely order it online. I think they have a digital version as well. And of course you can follow Dance Magazine on Instagram and on Twitter and probably on Facebook as well. Be sure to check out Dance Magazine, get the latest. To Dance Magazine, thank you so much for continuing to make a fantastic dance resource for all of us dancers out here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you all so much for watching as always. My name is Georgia Reed. You've been watching Ballerina Badass. Never give up, never stop dancing. I love you all. Toy, toy, toy.